and if they got a smile or even a hint of one out of a previously disturbed frame of mind, the women would call attention to this in hopes that the men might feel the love and respond. Here there was something off. Plain to see a courting going on in Uma's apartment, not very well disguised. The women, mostly in heels and stockings and straps, dressed like they were going to hit the club. Some looked classy, others looked trashy. A few were smoking, tapping their ashes into glasses. All were made up, though Uma was not. I couldn't have been more out of place, disheveled. I noticed the chicks mostly keeping cool or keeping quiet. Some seemed to talk freely in an uninhibited fashion, while others were reserved. Like there was a hierarchy of some kind. Uh, maybe it was just age, just because the quiet ones seemed to be the younger ones. Clearly, there was an overall effort to help the men feel comfortable, which I found a little unusual. In the realm of affect, most men were stone cold out matched by women and naturally conceited and were manipulated. In social spheres, some men were goners, especially the ones who grabbed for power. And come a woman with a grudge against him, having been treated unfairly in other realms of life where men hold all the cards, he'd be all the less able to be revived. And the man who died a social death at the admonishment of a woman, well, easily fell away into the chasm of social disturbance, disconnect, progressing to isolationism, even despair over time. Could even be fatal. Looking around the room, I guess the ways and means here didn't add up to compassion. The men clearly were an instant away from pawing the silks and stockings right off these girls. I knew better than to believe all these women were in the grips of trying to rescue anything other than their own bank accounts, if they had bank accounts. Chapter 13 After an eternity of my being silent and listening, like an overbooked therapist to a great number of mentally disturbed cases in the room, one young man caught my eye. He looked about my age, maybe a little younger. His short black hair was tousled. He was wearing a black flag t-shirt and some charcoal jeans all patched up at the knees and ass. Of course, I was just dreaming of his ass until he got up off of it and my imagination proved accurate. By his posture and demeanor, I could tell that he too was hoping the couch he was sitting on might sink into the floor and transport him to another time and place. He was staring straight ahead toward the far bank of windows, just dreaming they might open and some great displacement of air pressure might literally suck him into outer space. I could not catch his attention, and though I tried to send him some of my thoughts, he either could not hear or was not listening. He was considerably younger and unlike the other men in the room who were guaranteed to show him zero respect if he dared try to speak at all. Anyone who looked or dressed like a punk in the USA, hey, calm down up there, was promised to be treated like one. Only punks paid punks any sort of kindness or compatriotism. He was disinterested. He wanted to be somewhere else. How he got here was anybody's guess. An Asian girl sitting beside him asked him his name. I could hear them above the chatter around us. Maze, he said. Hi, Maze. I like that. That's a really interesting name, she said. Her eyes were made up like butterflies, and her eyelids and lashes were flapping their wings. Oh, thanks. I like your eyes. Did you do them yourself? She giggled. No, Maze. I got them done at the salon. I wish I could do eyes like that. Well, he said, you could learn, couldn't you? I suppose. 